Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at the third type of galaxy. We saw the elliptical galaxy, we saw the spiral galaxies. Now we're taking a look at the irregular galaxies. And of course the name indicates that they don't have a specific shape. They're irregular in shape. They tend to be small and they tend to have a lot of the gases and nebulas that you find in the spiral arms of elliptical galaxies and hence a lot of star formation. So there's still a lot of materials in those, ellipt in those um, nondescript, irregular shaped galaxies that causes a lot of uh, star formation to occur. So as you can see, they tend to be small and they tend to be irregular in shape. And here we have a really nice little picture. Right here is the irregular galaxy. It's NGC 1427A. It's about 65 million light years from us, and it's about 32,000 light years in length. Now, that's actually quite large for an irregular galaxy. Typically, irregular galaxies are like 5 to 10, 15 million light years across. This one is an unusually big one. Now, two of the famous irregular galaxies are, of course, the large and the small Magellanic Clouds, which are satellite galaxies of our own Milky Way galaxy, about 160, 170,000 light years from us. So they're actually visible with the naked eye from the Southern Hemisphere. I personally have never seen them because I've never traveled to the Southern Hemisphere, but maybe one day I get the chance to do so so that you can actually clearly see the galaxies in the sky. They look like fuzzy little patches, they look like clouds, of course with the naked eye you can't see the individual stars, they're simply too far away, but with a relatively small uh, telescope you can actually see a little bit more detail in those small Magellan, in the small and large Magellanic cloud. Now they are rich, as we said, they're rich in interstellar gas and dust, so there's lots of star formation, active star formation, therefore a lot of young O and B type stars. And so again, when you look at irregular galaxies, you tend to see the bluish color from the young, new O and B type stars. Um, they also have old stars, so they tend, there tends to be a mix. And since there's no, not really a region where you have only the new stars and region where you have old stars, they're kind of intermingled, so it's hard to see. But definitely intermingled, you have both the old stars and the new stars in irregular galaxies. Irregular galaxies make up about 25% of all the galaxies in, in the universe. Now that's hard to determine because again they're usually much smaller and much harder to see. The large ellipticals and the large spiral galaxies are much easier to see but they're quite abundant. In our own local group I think about 10 or 15 or so of the galaxies in our local group are the irregular type galaxies. So they're quite abundant relative uh, to the other galaxies in the universe. Um, we divide the irregular galaxies into two groups. Again, there's a subdivision in the irregular galaxies that so we call them IRR1 and IRR2. The IRR1 are the typically uh, are the more typical irregular galaxies. There's little organized structure. It's just basically a blob of stars. Uh, again many O and B type stars, so lots of star formation taking place, and you find that there's many, and I think many should have two ends in it, doesn't it? Many? One end. One end? Really? It looks strange. Hmm. Maybe spelled it Okay, well, all right, I've been corrected. Many is indeed one end. And uh, so there's many what we call H2 regions. Now H stands for hydrogen and two indicates that it's ionized. So there's a lot of atomic ionized hydrogen ionized because there are a lot of O and B type stars, so there's a lot of UV radiation inside those galaxies, therefore ionizing the gas regions into what we call H2 regions. So that's very typical for IRR1, irregular one type uh, galaxies. The irregular twos is a special category. What's special about them is that they tend to have a symmetrical irregular type shape. There's something going on in these galaxies that's unusual. So for example, M82 is one of those irregular galaxies that are kind of out of the ordinary because at the very center there's a massive black hole with an equivalent mass of 30 million uh, suns. So it's a huge black hole. Then there's a smaller black hole not too far away from the center which has about a mass of about 500 solar masses. And we see a lot of X-ray emissions and whenever there's a lot of X-ray emissions there's a lot of energy. It can push and shove the parts of the galaxy out of shape. And so you see that there's these different structures caused by the 
high intensity radiation and the influence of a massive black hole at the center. So you are going to see some unusual kind of structures in the IR2 uh, galaxies versus the bland, nondescript blob of stars called the IR1 uh, type galaxy. So there's definitely uh, some special types, but the vast majority, of course, fall in this category and they tend to be nondescript and they're pretty ubiquitous. They're everywhere in the galaxy and there's really no particular shape to any one of them. 